I have this really nice looking micro cassette recorder with a combined AM FM radio. It looks like this was mainly intended to be a voice recorder with its built in microphone. And I'm kind of wondering if it could also record from the radio. I can't be sure of that though, because I didn't get any instructions for this and I can't find a user manual online. I would try and test this, but while it turns on, the tape transport doesn't seem to be moving at all, and I can't hear any whirring, which is not a good sign. It looks really nice though, with its all metal front, and the rest of the casing is in a black plastic. It's a Sony M-301. When I first saw it, I thought the design could almost be early 1990s. I had a look around online and didn't really find very much about it, but I did find it featured in these blurry photos of a Japanese Sony catalog. And looking at the other devices in this catalog, they all look very 1980s, even early 1980s. This catalog also has the Pressman TCM100. This device is from 1978, and this is the cassette recorder that the very first Sony Walkman was based upon. So I'm starting to wonder if this micro cassette recorder could actually be in late 1970s. And looking close up at the plastic on the back, it's got a very 1970s feel to it, with its textured surface and its combination English and Japanese description on the back. I'd really like to see this working. But even when I put a tape inside, nothing is moving. The lights come on and the radio gives a nice hiss. So at least the electronics have power. I'm going to have to open this up and see if it can be fixed. Removing the screws is very straightforward. Though I note that one of them seems to be missing, which makes me wonder if someone has already taken this apart. And ooh, an internal diagram. This looks like some details for tuning the radio. This also means this would have an entirely analog based radio circuit inside with all analog oscillators. There's not going to be any phase locked loop radio tuning inside this. And look at that main circuit board. These traces all look hand drawn. Not only is there nothing digital about this device, the designers who made this likely designed the entire thing on paper from its circuits to its final design. Okay, I'm pretty keen to get this open, but I have to be careful because I'm not really sure how this is going to come apart yet. It looks like there's more screws holding the front on, so I'm going to take that off as well. And yep, there's another missing screw here. I guess it's possible these have just come out over time. Okay, with the front off and wow, that's so old. Unfortunately, there's not much indication here for getting any further inside. So I'm just going to keep taking screws out and just very carefully moving bits around to see which bits become loose. I have to be careful because I don't want to break anything. It's a case of patiently moving bits. Okay, now that I've got the tuning knob out of the casing, that main board is finally starting to lift up. And I'm getting my first glimpse of the mechanical section inside. And there's the drive belt. I'm glad it hasn't decayed too much. It feels kind of loose, but it is at least still intact. Okay, I'm going to remove this blue wire that's going through to the front section so that I can open it further. This hinging for the main circuit board shows that Sony were designing this for servicing. I'm going to drop the batteries back in and see if I can operate it. And this is where my fears have been confirmed. It looks like the motor is simply not moving at all. I can turn the shaft with my screwdriver so I know it's not stuck, but it looks like the motor or whatever drives the motor is dead. There are a lot of internal micro switches that the buttons press on and the tape mechanism would also press on. The radio works though. 
It's possible that one of these micro switches also activates the motor. But then I probably would have heard the motor whirring before I took it apart. Unfortunately, the only way to be sure at this point would be to read the service manual. I did find the front page of the Japanese version of the service manual online, but nothing more. And also someone selling an English copy of the original service manual. This all pushes it into not really worth fixing for me territory. But I'm still glad I got to have a look inside at this thing. And I'm going to show it the respect it deserves by doing a full reassembly. Maybe someday someone after me would like the challenge of fixing this. Until then, it makes for quite a nice display piece. Plus, when it's back together, I can get some really nice high quality photos and put them online to add them to the few that already exist. I also found this advertisement for the 301 from a Singapore newspaper in 1978, confirming the year this model was released. The ad mentions this can be used with a wireless remote control. What kind of micro cassette recorder had a wireless remote control in 1978? Unfortunately, that's a mystery I may never be able to solve. I'll just have to put this on a shelf and admire its blackness. I'd also like to thank Inky for joining me on the desk tonight. She always makes me feel a bit better when there's something I can't fix.